Hi, my name is Stephen Chavez. I am an operator three at the Napa Sanitation District. Our work is very important for our community and environment. Here, we operate several treatment processes to remove pollutants from the water. My name is Elsa Seal. I'm an administrative assistant at Napa San and I work in the front office. I've been here for 12 years and my main responsibilities are greeting visitors, answering phones, processing permits, paying invoices, and offering clerical support to all departments at the district. Hi, my name is Jeff Tucker. I'm the Director of Administrative Services and Chief Financial Officer here at Napa San. At Napa San, I oversee budgets, accounting, IT, safety, and fleet management. Hello, my name is Rodrigo Montanez. I've been working for Napa Sanitation District as a laboratory analyst for the past 12 years. Some of my responsibilities here in the district are to perform a wide variety of chemical, physical, and bacteriological analysis. I also do data interpretation of surface, ground, wastewater, and recycled water to assist in making changes to plant operations. In addition, my responsibilities include conducting field sampling and field investigations. My name is Stephanie Turnipseed, and I'm the Pollution Prevention and Outreach Coordinator at Napa Sanitation District. I've been with the district for about a year and a half. In my position, I give tours, conduct classroom presentations, plan events for the community, work with businesses on pollution prevention issues, issue press releases, and take care of our website and Facebook pages. We are definitely not professional actors, and that likely will be very clear to you after you watch this video. But what we do want you to take away from this video is not our Oscar-worthy performances, but the amount of math that goes into every process at a wastewater treatment plant. Math is needed for every operation here at Napa San. So you could say that math helps us to protect public health, the environment, and the Napa River, which is what we all enjoy most about working here. We hope you enjoy this video as much as we enjoyed making it. So, this is called secondary treatment. The wastewater has already gone through primary treatment, where we remove debris from the wastewater, such as rags, paper, diapers, wipes, sand, and also heavy stuff like sludge. This water now has dissolved material in it, and we have to get it out. We get it out, get the dissolved material out of this process called activated sludge. So activated sludge is the point in the treatment process where we wake up or activate the microbes. We activate the microbes so that they can help us clean the water. Yes, we use activated sludge process where we grow microorganisms to eat the pollutants as a food source. Just like people, the microbes stay alive because we keep them happy. They need to be wet, fed, and they need oxygen to breathe. Look at all those tiny bubbles. Hmm, they must be heavy eaters. What is this place? It's so warm and bubbly. And look at all this food! <gasps> Aeration is one of the largest energy consumers in the treatment plant. Too much air is wasteful and too little can cause process upsets. So the microbes like just enough air. That sounds like the story of Goldilocks. Ooh, this is too much. Hmm, that's too little. Hmm, this is just right. I guess, I guess so. so. So how do you know how much air you need for the microbiology when you're trying to feed them? This is actually a very important calculation. We use both for process control and energy efficiency. Here, let me illustrate this here. We know how many pounds of microorganisms we have in the system. And we know how much food, or BOD, they can eat 
based on the food to microorganism ratio. Although we have very little control over the amount of food that comes in, but we can control the number of organisms and the amount of air that we add. Okay, I'm following this. So if we know how much food is being added to the system, and we know how much oxygen is used by the microorganisms to digest that food, then we should be able to use math to figure out how much air we need. Yes, let's go do some math. 